To develop embedded applications on the model level, you really only need three UML element types, classes, state machines, and activities. A state machine is essentially a controller that decides when to do what. Its purpose, as well as the purpose of an activity, is the implementation of an algorithm. At the lowest level, users can implement handwritten source code either as the implementation of an operation or an opaque action. At Libre Libre, we believe that developing an entire application from scratch using only a model-based approach is often unfeasible. It's much more reasonable to reuse existing code while developing parts of the solutions using the advantages of unified modeling language, such as the state machine, which is an integral part of UML. This is the reverse engineered legacy code package, typically consisting of drivers, libraries, and existing common components. On all diagrams, the legacy code model elements are shown in blue. The overview diagram shows the forward engineered part of the Wheel of Fortune model, as well as the part that has been reverse engineered from the legacy code. The developers use the reverse engineered part by calling reverse engineered operations in the forward engineered part of their models. This requires using include statements later in the source code, and, as you can see, we use usage connectors to model these kinds of dependencies. As you can see, all the required include statements have been correctly generated. One of the most frequently raised topics in model-based engineering is that of round-trip engineering. Well, there's a good reason why there is no workable solution for round-trip engineering on the market. This is because the generated code essentially consists of two parts, the part that defines pattern implementation and the part that defines user-specific logic. While these parts are easily recognizable in the model, in the source code, one can hardly be discerned from the other since they are essentially interwoven. So, this is where mistakes are bound to be made while programming the source code. And once this mistake has been made and both parts have been mixed up, not even the world's most advanced parser can reassemble this code into a clean model. Nevertheless, even if model-based engineering provides many advantages, some parts can be developed much more quickly in the source code editor. The user code sync feature integrated into Libre Libre Embedded Engineer offers a workable alternative to round-trip engineering by clearly marking the areas in the source code that can safely be edited by the developer at any time. Typically, users add some handwritten source code either as the implementation of an operation or an opaque action. What you have just seen is a typical example of how to edit sections of user code using Enterprise Architect. As you can see, it's easy to get confused when switching back and forth among dialogues. Of course, modern IDE features like syntax highlighting, IntelliSense, and so on are missing. But with Embedded Engineer, it is possible to go directly to the source code without having to jump through EA dialogues. To show how this works, we'll open the source code, change the code in the user code section, and regenerate the code, after which we will see that the changed code has become part of the model while remaining intact in the generated source code. To edit the source code, we will use the built-in Enterprise Architect code editor, but of course you can use the IDE of your choice. As you can see, the changed value remains and the embedded engineer code generator has not overwritten our changes. The changes we made to the source code have been taken over into the model. This is a straightforward approach making it possible to combine the features of modern IDEs and model-based development. Embedded software is often used in safety critical areas where standards must be strictly adhered to during development. And one of the most important stipulations of safety standards is that of traceability throughout the development life cycle. This is easily achieved with Embedded Engineer. Anyone who has experience with trying to trace requirements throughout the development life cycle knows how time consuming and error prone this process is. With Embedded Engineer, all that is required is to create one trace connector and to regenerate the code. Next, we will connect our Wheel of Fortune class to some of the requirements for which implementation of the class is responsible and see what happens in the generated code. Sometimes it is necessary to document the fact that some requirements are implemented by one particular operation. Here's how this is done. Now it'll just take a couple of minutes to document all of our decisions, such as which part of the code are responsible for what requirements taking care to watch out for misspelling, incorrect formatting, wrong placement, copy-paste, or other time-stealing mistakes. As I mentioned before, we use the Code Composer compiler. In general, there are two options for compiling and deploying code. You can switch to the external IDE and continue there, or you can integrate these steps directly into Enterprise Architect, as I will show you now. 
The error you see here is the result of a mistake often made when modeling, leading to a compilation error. So LibreLibre has created a model validation framework to find these errors, which are actually common in model-based development. Our validation should show us the error we made so we can easily fix it. Using the wrong types of connectors is a very common mistake, and the model validation framework supports users while troubleshooting, showing you what the problem is so it's much easier to fix. In the very early days of software development, debugging was originally only possible on the assembler level, even if development was carried out in a high-level language like C or C++. The next great achievement in software development occurred when it became possible to carry out debugging directly in the programming language itself, which has been the standard approach for decades. Now, we find ourselves in a similar situation in model-based development. People design on the UML level and must debug the generated C or C++ code. Therefore, debugging on the model level represents the next big step in the evolution of software development. And with the UML debugger, LibreLibre has solved a common problem shared by the many code generation solutions on the market. Troubleshooting and bug fixing always requires you to immediately switch to the code generated from your model. And working directly in the code is exactly what you wanted to avoid in the first place when you started working with a model-based approach. Now we'll show you how to debug your model without switching to the source code. After you've generated and compiled your code, you can deploy and execute your new program on the hardware. Once it has been deployed, you can debug it directly in the model with the UML debugger, which synchronizes the model with the source code. You can even follow the execution on both levels at the same time. Here we have created an example based on the Texas Instruments Launchpad using model developed logic, an acceleration sensor, and an LED strip. Once you have configured Enterprise Architect for your environment, you can easily deploy the compiled code to the target device without leaving Enterprise Architect. UML Debugger is a part of Embedded Engineer, a standalone program which consists of its own project browser, diagram viewer, and source code viewer. You can select elements in the project browser and UML Debugger will automatically display any corresponding diagrams and corresponding generated source files. The corresponding generated code is highlighted in the source code viewer. This is one of the highlights of the LibreLibre UML debugger. If you ever need to debug on the source code level, this highly useful feature shows you exactly what part of the code has been generated from which model element or transition. Also, since you are now programming on the model level, it gives you a better understanding of the source code which you may not have ever seen before, because it has been automatically generated for you by LibreLibre Embedded Engineer. To facilitate debugging directly on the target device, UML Debugger already works with hardware debuggers from various well-known manufacturers such as Lauterbach, iSystem, Green Hills, or PLS. Now we start the Lauterbach Trace32, connect it to the target, and run the code. To show you the side-by-side -side debugging capabilities, we will set the breakpoint in the handwritten source code, then step through into the generated code to see what happens in the corresponding activity diagram. Now we remove the breakpoint and continue the execution. Now we will set the breakpoint in the state machine diagram. The UML debugger automatically synchronizes the breakpoint set on the diagram level with the hardware breakpoint, which will also be visualized in the source code. As you see, interacting with the hardware activated the breakpoint as expected, and the active breakpoints are visualized in the diagram as well as in the corresponding source code. Now we remove the breakpoint and continue the execution. Now we will set the breakpoint in the state machine diagram. The UML debugger automatically synchronizes the breakpoint set on the diagram level with the hardware breakpoint, which will be visualized also in the source code.